one whole f***ing minute of logos, two of which were for the same company. This is Burke. The How to Train Your Dragon franchise is based on British children's books, and Burke is a semi-dirty word to British children. Burke means nothing to American kids. For the US version, they should have changed the village name to Fart. This is Burke. Also narration. And the same narration that started and ended the first movie. Dragon racing! These Burke assholes are the most progressive f***s in human history. Going from hating dragons for bullshit reasons to having dragon races in just five years after learning they weren't so bad after all. Also discount Quidditch. That's nine for the twins! Of course the twins are winning, they're two people, and they have the dragon with the two heads, giving them an unfair advantage. Now dragons used to be a bit of a problem here, but that was five years ago. Everyone was terrified of dragons, and they constantly burned down the village. Yes, that was a bit of a problem. But they domesticated dragons in only five years? Come on. The dragons fly into the stable for an expositional tour, even though the race isn't over. We have custom stables, all-you-can-eat feeding stations, a full-service dragon wash. Burke could not possibly have the infrastructure to support this nonsense, but I'm guessing they sold high on all those dragon tears. Even top-of-the-line fire prevention, if I do say so myself. As long as a dragon starts a fire right under this exact spot, otherwise they're screwed. Also, this isn't preventing any fires, it's just putting them out. If they found a way to fireproof their buildings with some sort of magical paint, then I'd be impressed. This town exchanged their dragon cruelty for sheep cruelty. Too bad they don't have a toothless to show them the error of their ways. Gotcha! <laughs> Adult sheep can weigh well over a hundred pounds, yet these kids are able to throw it around, hold it with one arm, and do backflips and shit without breaking a sweat. Uh, excuse me! Starfly! <laughs> this guy is not only wielding a weapon that would be nearly impossible to carry, but he hits his friend in the face with it, and he isn't dead the next time we see him. He is completely fine. People who drive like this. This movie outdoes the look of the first movie, which was already amazing. So amazing, I'll take off a few sins for it. What in the name of Wily e. Coyote is this bullshit? It seems a little reckless for Toothless to be spitting fireballs at Hiccup, especially after he seemed reluctant to do this in the first place. They both survived this. Luckily for them, there was a much softer rock pillar directly behind the one he almost slammed into. You know that doesn't wash out. What, dragon slobber? That doesn't wash out? Isn't that essentially water? And you're in a society with all-you-can-eat dragon buffets. Astrid manages to find Hiccup in this uncharted area Hiccup and Toothless crashed into. 76 seconds of flirting youths. I know that I'm not my father, and I never met my mother, so... What does that make me? Hiccup tossing in this bit about never knowing his mother has less to do with him knowing who he is, and more to do with letting the viewers who didn't see the first movie know, because it's important to the story later. The Emerald City! Or did the Wizard of Oz merge with the Fortress of Solitude? What happened here? I know what happened. Elsa got banished again. Viking lightsaber. How do you suppose we explain this mess to Drago Bloodfist? Drago what fist? Pretty rich of a dude named Hiccup from Burke to make fun of anyone's name. Also, both Drago's parents and ancestors are assholes. He's expecting a new shipment of dragons for his army by tomorrow. Instead of just killing the kids and taking their dragons, the dragon hunters explain their entire mission to them. These dragon hunters are inexplicably unarmed, so Hiccup and Astrid are able to free the dragon and fly off with no trouble at all. We'll follow those trappers to Drago and talk some sense into him. Why is it that the heroes of these movies always think that the guy described as a madman sounds like someone you can talk sense into? What are you doing? So either Hiccup didn't take the five minutes to land and explain his plan to Astrid, or he's making it up as he goes along. Just what every dragon trapper needs. One end coats the blade in monstrous nightmare saliva, the other sprays hideous zippleback gas. All it takes is a spark and... Hiccup surrenders his weapon for the sole purpose of explaining how it works. Also, this doesn't kill them. It's not loud! Wait, wait, what are you doing? How do these people keep finding Hiccup if he doesn't tell anyone where he's going? And from what I've seen, this is uncharted territory. Me, likey. This girl is actually so enamored with Kit Harrington, she's willing to be captured by him, with the likelihood of scoring very low. Hiccup's mother is wearing her Grand Wizard of Dragons mask, because when she goes flying around, she needs to look potentially evil. Hiccup's mom is able to stand on this dragon without losing her balance or getting knocked off, because movie forgot how wind works. Toothless doesn't drown twice in this series. Gasp! She recognizes Hiccup's small, basically unnoticeable scar that no one has ever mentioned before. Also, Mom knows who her kid is after last seeing him as a baby and because of a scar that she forgot about long ago because she was whisked away five seconds after he got it. But a mother never forgets. So I guess we figured out what happened to Merida after the end of Brave. No need for Brave 2, Pixar. We're warning you. Stoic and Dauber conveniently happen along the hole in the ice where Toothless fell, where Hiccup's helmet is conveniently floating. Find them, Skull Crusher. Dragons can apparently pick up scents like bloodhounds, even though this mask has been sitting in ice cold water all this time. Why not? You try looking up a Wikipedia page on dragons and finding that ability. Also, how have we not already done this with another one of Hiccup's belongings? There is remarkably little dragon shit on those rocks. It's brighter inside this butterfly house of dragons than it is outside. Muppet ripoff dragon. Tongue petting. This rain cutter had a wing slice. Poor hobble grump. Valka came up with these dragon names with Lewis Carroll. Everyone back home had dragons of their own. <laughs> if only it were possible. No, really. Believe me, 
I tried as well. Falca doesn't believe Hiccup, even though he still lives in Burke, and she hasn't been there in 20 years. People are not capable of change, Hiccup. Said the stay-at-home mom of a small child and wife of the village king before she decided to make a go of this whole dragon sanctuary thing. Baby who grows up to be the protagonist isn't scared shitless by something scary as shit cliche. It broke my heart to stay away, but I believed it'd be safer if I did. Safer how? Are you saying that the dragons would use your children to get to you? Are you Spider-Man? We have to find them. Which in this movie is as easy as just picking a direction and stumbling on the person you're looking for. If we don't turn up with dragons and fast! Careful what you wish for! Don't Astrid was able to hear Eret say this even though he was facing away from her and she was flying a dragon. Every dragon has its secrets. And Valka just happens to know what they all are and how to reveal them. Also, how does Toothless not know his body can do this? That would be like me discovering that I had a third hand my whole life and I didn't notice it until some lady rubbed my neck. Also, you mean after five years of riding Toothless, Hiccup never learned this easy ass trick even by accident? They know we're missing and they have tracking dragons. Astrid tells Drago that everyone from Burke is a dragon rider, along with specific information about the main characters, giving him an opportunity to attack them before they can attack Drago, making Astrid some sort of Bond villain slash hero. Movie subjects me to more animated arm muscle erotica. I think we did well with this one, Val. I think you did well, Stoic. Will you be my wife once again? <laughs> Marriage extortion. Surprise! Movie expects me to believe these kids were able to get past all the guards and soldiers, hide in the traps with their dragons, and blow their way out of the traps that were designed to contain f***ing dragons, and ultimately almost defeat this giant army? I guess so. I guess eventually she's gonna marry both of these guys? That there's some adult themes, I'll tell you what. The Alpha. Now. We have a fight! Drago is standing alone, talking to himself for most of this battle. Then it's a good thing I brought a challenger. <laughs> you can totally kill Drago right now, by the way. This movie suddenly got Godzilla, Pacific Rim, and Clash of the Titans on our asses. The ocean must get real deep about 10 feet into this beach, because if it had a normal island shore, there would be no fucking way this creature would be able to stay completely submerged. Also, I know this is a fantasy world, but ships still cost time and money to make, right? Why would you waste some perfectly good ships by not moving them out of the way for the Alpha Dragon to make his grand entrance? It takes more than a little fire to kill me! This is true of most Burke citizens. The dragon attacks in the first movie yielded no fatalities. And I'm pretty sure no one in this movie will be killed by fire either. Instead of designing a different Godzilla dragon, let's just make two Godzilla dragons that look exactly the same. But the bad guy dragon is black and the good one is white because that's racist. Don't make a children's movie about dragons goring each other to death if you don't have the guts to show blood. I guess there are other main characters fighting in this huge battle, but I guess they're not important. Or they're flying around waiting for the movie to pay attention to them. Who knows? This feels like a bloody, confusing battle where nobody's dying. All of this loss. And for what? Hiccup still thinks he can talk to this guy. To become unstoppable? To rule the world? I mean, yeah. If Toothless is being mind-controlled right now, what's taking him so long to kill Hiccup? Moments earlier, we saw Toothless's purple fireball completely obliterate several giant weapons. Yet, when Stoic takes a Toothless fireball to the chest, he still remains entirely intact. Get away from him! Even though it's totally obvious Toothless was mind-controlled, Hiccup decides to blame him for dumb and infuriating reasons. Uh, he took all the dragons? Not all of them. Since they couldn't defeat Drago with hundreds of adult dragons, they're going to try and defeat Drago with a few baby dragons. And based on how much time is left in the movie and the kind of movie this is, they're probably going to succeed. But won't that Bewilderbeast just take control of these guys too? They're babies! They don't listen to anyone! Oh sure, let's just ride our hopes on that. Besides, this is mind control, not real communication, right? Also, if they don't listen to anyone, how are you able to ride them and guide them where they need to go? They'd be perfectly content staying back on Pandora, right? The Alpha is easily distracted. <laughs> Sheep Blinko. Hypnotized dragons only see an out-of-focus silent film. You'd never hurt me. The real you is inside there somewhere cliche. How are you doing that? Movie magic. Also, Drago is letting him do this instead of flying away, or making the alpha male make Toothless hit him with a fireball. There are several other better options, but Drago seems to be a huge fan of remaining stationary. Is he incapable of being re-mind controlled now? Wait, is this movie saying as long as the dragons can't see, the bewilderbeast can't control his brain? The wind ripped this blindfold between shots because first there is no tear, then suddenly there's a tear. Hiccup's aim is impossibly impeccable. This is Burke. God damn it. This is Papa Dragon. I want this mission high and tight. I want to be home for dinner. He likes you. Aren't I the popular one? 
thank you for saving my life. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Yeah. <laughs> parents fought against him but nobody lived once he decided to kill him nobody not one except you a mark like that only comes from being touched by a curse and an evil curse at that strength of will over others all glory to the hypno toad get out of here can't you see we don't want you anymore why can't you go back where you came from? <laughs>